Have you ever wondered what you would get if you crossed fractal wrongness? That's when the argument that someone's making isn't just wrong. It's wrong on every conceivable level you can look at the problem. With the old Bertram Russell quote that the whole problem of the world is that fools and fanatics are always too certain of themselves, while wiser people are full of doubts. Now, you may have heard recently from uh, some sectors that Wi-Fi can give you cancer. I'm sure by now most of you have heard about the negative effects of Wi-Fi and the 5G network. It's carcinogenic. It can cause cancer. This is mere amateur hour levels of stupidity. This is a uh, Dr. Rashid Butter, and in his amazing video, it will happen in December. He's going to reveal to us that it doesn't just cause cancer, it disrupts the Earth's magnetic uh, grid. Occurring, you're going to see all sorts of other natural disasters starting to increase because we're disrupting the Earth's magnetic grid. It's going to cause landslides and earthquakes. You start seeing all sorts of landslides like this. You're going to see earthquakes. There's been more earthquakes. It's it's going to affect the weather. And you know now you're talking about other implications. And that could be not just what, how it's going to affect life, but what it's going to do to weather patterns. Hell, it's going to destroy the very morphology of the entire planet. What's it going to do to the to the morphological structure and the, the configuration of the planet itself. So, you know, you're going to start seeing more natural disasters. You saw the footage with uh, the sloughing off in Norway of... Yes, the doctor's extensive research has shown that this was caused by Wi-Fi. So looking at just some of the fundamental aspects of what this energetic system does, what this radio frequency electromagnetic fields do, and they have an impact on, on all living things, no matter whether it's you know, 1G, 2G, 3G, I won't say beyond that. Now, you might think that we had lots of landslides before we had Wi-Fi, but trust me, this guy is a doctor. We're going to see more landslides because Wi-Fi? Feed right into the ocean. You're going to start seeing all sorts of landslides like this. You're going to see earthquakes. There's been more earthquakes occurring. You're going to see all sorts of other natural disasters. What's that? Natural disasters? I thought you were just telling us that they were caused by Wi-Fi. Hell, at that point, I'm surprised he stopped there. If you're going to go for this levels of delusion, why not just go all in? It gives you split ends and causes lime scale in kettles. It's the reason that you feel kind of depressed on Monday morning. And it's the sole reason that the Illuminati pack hot dogs in packs of 10, but buns in packs of 8. It's the source of 90% of flat tires on cars and makes you 74% more likely to lose your house keys. It makes milk go sour and makes out with your childhood sweetheart when your back is turned. The devil of all of the mainstream religions and Scientology get five cents every time you turn on a Wi-Fi device. And it's the reason that it always rains on that one day that you forgot your umbrella. And, and, it will happen in December. <laughs> what is it, I hear you ask? Or we'll come to that in a second. Now, you might think that this guy is just some harmless nut, but it's really not true. This video has the best part of a million hits and a 98% approval rating. And the comments are a complete basket of crazy that just eat up everything he says with hashtags of advanced medicine and we change the world, and Dr. Rashid Butter. And if that name sounds familiar, yes, that is the guy I busted a few weeks ago, the guy who got disciplined for injecting children with cancer with bleach. Before the North Carolina Medical Board, Rashid Ali Butter. Dr. Butter charged exorbitant fees for his ineffectual therapies. The total cost of the intravenous injections and other therapies for these cancer patients at times ranged in the thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars. Not only would Dr. Butter order and administer unproven and ineffectual therapies for patients A, B, and C in an attempt to drive up his billing. A lot of people that are in positions of authority that have completely either never had any integrity or have lost their integrity. 
he would also order numerous tests and lab work for these patients that had no rationale, medical relationship to the patient's cancer diagnosis. And any person, any person who challenges that, because they are doctors that are arguing with it. In essence, the medical records indicate that the extensive testing and lab work on patients A, B, C, and D were not ordered for any medical or clinical purpose, but were instead ordered in an attempt to drive up costs. Dr. Butter provided therapies to patients A, B, and C that were unproven and wholly ineffective. The therapies consisted primarily of intravenous administration of a variety of substances, none of which has any known value for the treatment of cancer. The substance included EDTA, chromium, certain vitamins, and hydrogen peroxide, which by its action is a bleaching agent. Besides just being idiots and being liars, you've already compromised your integrity. How do you sleep at night? Says the man who injected cancer patients with bleach. A couple of people try to attack my credentials, like demanding that I prove that I'm a physician. You think I, I, I became a physician and I do what I've do, been doing for 29 years so I can prove to you that I'm a physician? Are you really that stupid? Yeah, let's look him up on Google and see what comes up. Rashid Butter is an American osteopathic physician. That's a type of a uh, alternative medicine. You know what they call alternative medicine that's been proved to work? Medicine. Now, if you watch some of his videos, you'll notice that Butter here whines a lot about uh, censorship. You know, it's just not fair that he's not allowed to claim that injecting bleach cures cancer. I mean, why are they trying to censor this? Regardless of what's being said, what does it mean when something that's being said is being taken off the internet? Well, that kind of depends now, doesn't it? Let's just say you were this woman, for instance. Wellness blogger Belle Gibson shot to fame after claiming she'd cured her terminal cancer with healthy eating and natural remedies. But it was all a hoax. She never had cancer. It's been almost two years since she was found guilty of misleading and deceptive conduct and ordered to pay $410,000. When someone fakes that they have cancer to boost their book and app sales, and then gets ordered to both take those claims down and not make them again. This is what Rashid Bata thinks of that. There's no difference between burning a book and taking something off the internet. There's so much misinformation going on. There's so much misinformation going on. Handle. Hmm, gonna need a new irony meter at some point. And a lot of critical thinkers would say at this point, that's absolutely fine. Free speech does not extend to profiting of people dying from cancer by selling them a false hope. Sean died in January 2019, three years after turning down hospital treatment and deciding he was gonna cure his cancer without his doctor's help. Or even worse, potentially preventing them from seeing a real doctor who might actually be able to help them. You're having to deal with these doctors. Doctors. Or are they, re are they doctors or the pill salesmen? I'll leave that up to you for the size. And so the question I think people should ask is why is this being censored? Because a lot of critical thinkers are saying, wait, wait a second, we're not living in North Korea. We're not living in China. Why is this information being shut down? Yeah, sure thing, Butter. Unless you allow people to make baseless claims about overpriced bleach injections curing cancer, you're North Korea. Got it. Incidentally, this ain't that hyperbolic. The thing that Butter is talking about here is YouTube removing one or two of his videos for his tin foil hat virus conspiracies. But it did get me thinking, for a man who complains this much, he sure as hell does love the credibility of plastering every damn mainstream media logo next to his name. You know, it's almost like he's smearing this all over his body in the hopes that it will uh, rub some of its credibility off on him. Shh, no one tell his audience though. They might start to think that he's one of them. So for giggles, I thought, whatever. I'll take a look at some of his appearances on these media outlets. Now, a lot of them, you try and search for them, you can find absolutely nothing. But others throw up stuff like this. This is Desri Jennings. 
And about 10 years ago, she was a beautiful, young cheerleader. I, you know, was just become a redskin cheerleader. I was... And she claimed that a, a horrible reaction to a simple flu shot gave her a bad Australian accent. I'm from Ohio. I should not be talking like this. It sounds like you have an Australian accent. It, it's, yeah, I've heard Australian, British, um, but, you know, it just essentially comes down to the um, inability to pronounce what. And when she was fine, when she was walking backwards, but when she walked forwards, it was like this. She's the beautiful cheerleader whose heartbreaking story is shocking the nation. <laughs> 25-year-old Desiree Jennings showed me how she can't walk without twisting, jerky movements. You fake the walk. You'd have to be absolutely amazing, amazing actress or actor to put on something like that. Strange symptoms indeed but maybe more surprisingly. But look at Desiree now. We found her walking normally, playing with her dogs, going shopping, even getting behind the wheel of a car and driving. The symptoms only appeared when she knew she was on camera. Hard to believe the woman we've been discreetly observing over the last few weeks is the same woman we met during the height of the flu shot scare. They have noticed something that surprised us. Desiree is now speaking with a foreign accent she never had before. I'm from Ohio. I should not be talking like this. It sounds like you have an Australian accent. It, it's, yeah, I've heard Australian, British. Oh, that's glorious. She <laughs> condition is trying to fake a, a British accent. And she's offended that it's being mistaken as Australian. There's no way a flu shot can cause someone's accent to change. Absolutely not. And guess who was on hand to profit from her case? A precarious way. Dr. Novella is confident whatever she has was not caused by the flu shot. And in his opinion, she's being taken advantage of by a charlatan doctor using junk science. Yes, this is his ABC appearance. In fact, just this spring, Batar was reprimanded by the North Carolina Medical Board in order to disclose to his patients that his non-traditional treatments are unproven. Wow, just wow, that is so utterly, utterly shameless. To have a news article published about you calling you by a charlatan doctor using junk science. Then to advertise yourself with the logo of that news organization in the hope that some of their credibility will rub off on you. Besides just being idiots and being liars, you've already compromised your integrity. How do you sleep at night? Now, Butter's diagnosis of Desiree here was essentially that she'd been poisoned by mercury in the vaccine. You believe it's uncontroverted that the vaccine is toxic. Yes. But doctor after doctor we talked to said there is such a small amount of mercury that it's no way that it's toxic. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, why was there mercury in the vaccines in the first place? Well, to keep it sterile. Turns out vaccines have quite a lot of biological stuff in them, which can rot if bacteria get into them. And injecting them once they become bacterial colonies is a really bad idea. It can give you sepsis, which can kill you fairly quickly. So... You want to keep your vaccines sterile. And thimerosal was just one of the ways that was implemented for doing that. So how do we know that it wasn't the mercury that caused the problems? Well, a typical vaccine will contain about 25 micrograms of mercury, whereas a decent tuna steak will contain about four times that amount. Such a small amount of mercury. So that's like saying there's such a small little flame on this, on this match, it's no way it could cause this huge, massive forest fire. That's an absurd statement. Yeah, of course, Rashid. Which is why we know a single vaccine can cause an Australian accent. I mean, just imagine what eating an entire tuna steak with four times as much mercury could do. What are you then? I'm French. Why do you think I have this outrageous accent, you silly king? How can you say something is fraud when the person responds? But those type of testimonials, including the one of Desiree that Dr. Pitar posted so prominently on his website, are not accepted as proof by medical science. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. Most sick people get better. Hell, even with the coronavirus, about 98% of the people who get it will get better. So if I propose a treatment that involves looking in the mirror and say three times, Dr. Butar is a fraud. 
98% of the people will get better. This is why we do clinical studies. But you know why butter doesn't do clinical studies? Because that would be science. Why don't you just prove it? Why don't you have a real, real medical study done here? Uh, yeah. Get ready to facepalm. Of your patients. And so anecdotal stories on the internet are not science. I, I'm not, never, nobody said it was science. Yeah, that is a dog to butter there claiming about his own treatments. Nobody said it was science. I'm not, never, nobody said it was science, but. You offer it as proof that your system works. No, 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 I said about patients getting better. I'm not talking about proof. Yes, that's an anecdote, you muppet. Why am I getting so much attention? Maybe because, just maybe because we're getting results. Or because you're running a highly profitable fraud. Well, if I am running a highly profitable fraud, then I think that before you or anybody makes a judgment like that, then you need to talk to the patients that are getting better and make a decision for yourself. Desiree, I have to ask you directly. Yeah. Did Dr. Batar cure you? No, not at all. Ouch. <laughs> okay, so that's his 2020 appearance. I wonder what his appearance was like on Fox News. Since 1999, the North Carolina Medical Board has made multiple unsuccessful attempts to restrict Dr. Buttar's license. A new hearing is scheduled at the end of February. The board is seeking again to restrict his license as well as charge him with unprofessional conduct. Holy crap, how utterly, utterly, utterly without shame do you have to be to take a news article calling you a charlatan or that you're being investigated for medical malpractice and turn that into ass featured on. Okay, I think we've established the caliber of person that we're dealing with here. So let's take a look at this video, shall we? It will happen in December. Take a wild guess how many attempted assassination attempts on the president occurred from the time that he got elected, I think it was November 17th, to the time he took office. Oh, I don't know. Let's just try typing it into Google, shall we? Presidential assassination attempts trump bum and we get a list and it looks like three there's michael sanford a british national with a history of mental illness tried to seize a gun at a trump rally the pistol caught in the holster and sanford was immediately arrested and eventually deported to the uk um Okay, what do we got? November 2017, someone from the Islamic State reportedly was planning to assassinate Trump at some summit. And October 2018, a Navy veteran sent a letter containing crushed cast of beans to President Trump. Those are the three assassination attempts that we're looking at. Let's see how many butter thinks there have been, shall we? You want to take a wild guess? 25 from November 2015 till January 2016 when he took office. Now, this is what stunts me about conspiracy theorist videos. With me, there's maybe a, a degree of fact checking that maybe goes a little towards the anal to the point where people give me a hard time if I say espresso rather than espresso. Now, that's not quite the level that we're at here. With the conspiracy theorist videos where everyone else is sheeple just believing what they're told they get told that there have been 25 assassination attempts on trump and they just lap it up best part of a million hits and a 98 percent approval rating i mean what do they think here i mean don't they even pass this stuff what do they think that trump is some kind of assassination proof guy sort of die hard president version <laughs> Or do they think that the people trying to assassinate him are just really, really bad at it? He had his own private security force, and if that private security force hadn't been there, they could have gotten him. What's that tell us? It tells us that Dr. Butter has a lot to learn about reasoning from The Simpsons. By your logic, I could claim that this rock keeps tigers away. Oh, how does it work? It doesn't work. Uh-huh. It's just a stupid rock. Uh-huh. But I don't see any tigers around here, do you? Yes. Behold, the rock 
that saved the president from assassination 25 times as proof that if that rock didn't exist, they might have gotten him. Pizza, I want to buy your rock. Yeah, it's a great story. It's just, for it to be true, it requires everyone to keep completely silent about these 25 assassination attempts, which for some reason only Dr. Butter knows about. This is great stuff. I could make a career out of this guy. You see how clever this part is? How it doesn't require a shred of proof? And most paranoid delusions are intricate, but this is brilliant. Go back and look at his uh, platform when he was running for office. He clearly said vaccines are directly related to autism. Which is the truth. Well, no. Vaccines are not related to autism. But it's true that Trump was an anti-vaxxer who claimed that they did cause autism. Just the other day, two years old, two and a half years old, a child, a beautiful child, went to have the vaccine and came back and a week later got a tremendous fever, got very, very sick, now is autistic. Went to have the vaccine and came back and a week later... You have an Australian accent. It's, yeah, I've heard Australian, British. And came back and a week later... Trump was an anti-vaxxer. You know, all the time he could get away with denying medical reality and endearing himself to his devoted supporters like butter here. You know, but that was before there was a pandemic. Oddly, the best part of 200,000 dead Americans seems to have just about convinced the president that those medical doctors with their uh, vaccines might have actually known what they were talking about. Indeed, he's now gone from being an anti-vaxxer to ordering quite a lot of vaccine. Butter must be horrified, right? <laughs> Sorry, that's not how the brain of a conspiracy nut works. December, we would have 100 million vaccines, and by January of 2021, we'd have 200 million vaccines. And we were going to have the military roll this out to spread it. I talked to the president's advisor, and he says, what? Well, Let me guess. You said to the president's advisor, who I totally believe that you talked to, you said, my God, what is the president thinking? Doesn't he know that vaccines cause autism? Now he's planning to get enough vaccine for the whole country. That's horrific. What is the president doing? He must be part of the conspiracy to kill us all. Did anything sound strange to you in that comment? And I said, well, yeah, the military part, because you, you know, you'd use the National Guard of the Reserves, but you couldn't use the active duty military. You can only activate the National Guard. I said, no, I didn't notice anything else. He said, what were the dates when he's gonna roll out these vaccines? I said, December and January. And he goes, and when are the elections? I said, November, and he started chuckling. Yes, he chuckled because you, a rabid anti-vaxxer, didn't bat an eyelid when you said, yeah, the president's just ordered enough vaccine for the whole country. Now, where's my irony meter gone? No! Now, there's a lot of information like this. The president is in the middle of a cesspool. Well, with supporters like you, Rashid, Yes. Yes, he is. This was a uh, classified information by the Russian government that was actually initially published in 1970. Okay. Okay. You're going to have to keep your head together for this basket case. So this was classified information, which somehow he knows about, that was published in 1977 by the Russians. Quite why they're publishing classified information, I'm not certain. It was only for governmental use, and it was marked that way, and the CIA declassified it in 2012. Okay, so the CIA, that's the Central Intelligence Agency in America, declassified a Russian document. What? So it's actually been public information for since 2012, but this is, you know, we're looking at 43-year-old literature talking about the 5 millimeter, 60 hertz frequency. What? All this build up so you can go for five millimeter 60 hertz. Five millimeter 60 hertz frequency. Now, for anyone who knows anything about anything, you're going to be laughing right now because 60 hertz light doesn't have a wavelength of five millimeters, but five million meters. I think what Butter's actually talking about here is microwaves with a frequency not of 60 hertz, but 60 billion. Hertz. That's 60 gigahertz. 
But yeah, this is kind of the quality of research you expect from the guy who, in the last video I did debunking him, said that polypropylene face masks would react with the water in your breath to cause some sort of toxic mixture that would poison you. The condensation from your breath is breaking down the polypropylene components of the face mask. Even though polypropylene is mind-blowingly unreactive stuff, which you can immerse in vicious acid, vicious base, even sodium potassium alloy, all without reaction. And of course, it's used for numerous water bottles. The condensation from your breath is breaking down the polypropylene components of the face mask, and then you're breathing in those toxic components and creating a histotoxic hypoxic injury. And what was the other one? Oh yes, he claimed that putting a face mask on would lower your blood oxygen levels. And any person, any person who challenges that, because there are doctors that are arguing with it, you, besides just being idiots and being liars, you've already compromised your integrity. How do you sleep at night? Okay, it just takes an average, you don't have to be a doctor, it just takes an average person, put on a freaking mask and put on an oximeter, pulse oximeter, and you'll see your own oxygen levels drop. Awesome, I've got some of those. Which I then went on to demonstrate was bullshit. And, and the detrimental effects it has on the human system, on the, actually not just the human system, on any living system, and it's been completely ignored. Well, yes, yes, it has been totally ignored, but that's because there's no bloody effect. If there was, you might be able to point to something a little more convincing than what was it, a, a 50 year old classified Russian document that was declassified by the CIA for some reason. How about now that there are billions of these gigahertz devices, you know, cell phones, Wi-Fi and the such like, you show that there's been some sort of detrimental health effect from them. Oh yes, that's right, conspiracy nut. Can't do research, might dispel a very profitable conspiracy. Why am I getting so much attention? Maybe because, just maybe because, we're getting results. Or because you're running a highly profitable fraud. So looking at just some of the fundamental aspects of what this energetic system does, what this radio frequency electromagnetic fields do, and they have an impact on, on all living things, no matter whether it's you know, 1G, 2G, 3G. Actually, we got a pretty good idea already. You see, 30 or so years ago, there were essentially no mobile phones. Now, there are something like 5 billion. Yet, has there been any detectable change in the cancer rate? And there's a very simple reason for that result, which can be exemplified by doing the actual experiments on the sorts of microwaves and Wi-Fi that he's talking about here, like you would get in 5G. And you can show it has a minuscule heating effect. That's the only detectable effect of very modest heating. How modest? Well, sunlight is about a thousand watts per square meter. And we all know how instantly fatal that can be to a life form with a well-regulated heat control system. You know, like a warm-blooded mammal or something. Or, well, for that matter, how about a cold-blooded animal like a lizard? So sunlight's a thousand watts per square meter. Mobile phone transmitter is typically less than a watt. And just to put that into perspective, your body typically runs at about 100 watts. Goes up to about 400 when you're exercising. Your body isn't going to struggle, even, even if you had that phone surgically implanted in you, such that you would get all of the heating from that transmitter, your body wouldn't even slightly struggle to get rid of one extra watt of heating. But regardless of what level it is, it's always had some type of an impact on physiology. But the most recent version of it creates some very noticeable metabolic changes. And anecdotal stories on the internet are not science. I, I'm not, never, nobody said it was science. These changes have an impact not only on the immune system, but also on the cell membrane integrity. No, just no. But again, if you wanted to scientifically demonstrate this, it would be trivial. You just get your 5G transmitter and irradiate some cells with them. And boom, you should be able to quantify such a change. Has butter done such an experiment? Of course not. That would instantly disprove his conspiracy. 
is that the voltage gated calcium channels that are so critical for the ability of the cell membrane to regulate efflux and influx of calcium within the cell when this voltage gated calcium channels get disrupted this may be shocking but butter is talking bullshit again the only thing you can get from exposure to these wi-fi signals is a very very modest heating you know we're talking one thousandth of the heating that you would get from sunlight tops so the penetration of the 5g is oh yeah you see him he's actually been cooked look at that i've actually heated a piece of cheese up by about one degree celsius over mm, half an hour meanwhile if i let go of it you will see that uh eh, my fingerprints will do that in seconds it allows for calcium to come into the cells sorry the temperature differences you're talking about here will have no effect on the calcium influx into the cell which then causes a suppression of apoptosis apoptosis is the natural programmed cell death and now uh, the minuscule thermal heating that you get from these radio signals will have zero effect on the apoptosis rates otherwise butter here could actually measure it and demonstrate it to us you know just like he demonstrated to us how wearing a face mask depleted your blood oxygen levels right <laughs> I'm sure by now most of you have heard about the negative effects of Wi-Fi and the 5G network. It's carcinogenic. It can cause cancer. And let's hear Butter's version of the same thing. Which is concomitant with the use of the, the basically the uh, propagation of cancer. It's actually consistent and congruent with the oncogenic process. Nah. Otherwise, with the explosion of cell phone use, there would have been an explosion of cancer rates. Meanwhile, in reality, it looks like this. Now, what happens when you start to create this type of disruption, that's just one aspect of it. But then you have other aspects that go into play. And so these... Yes, Butter, please elaborate on all these other amplifying factors that have had no effect on the cancer rates. Aspects as they come together it's not one plus one equaling two it's actually one plus one plus one equaling you know 33 type of thing it's it's a synergistic uh to a order of magnitude greater destructive nature yeah great so what we are looking at there isn't just a billion fold or so increase in the cancer rates from uh, cell phones it's like a billion times a billion times a billion increase in the cancer rates from cell phones so you've got other aspects from this technology that cause lymphocyte subpopulation suppression you have um, the hypoxic type injury components that people have been able to observe yeah sure butter just like the hypoxic injuries that you can get from reacting water with one of the most inert polymers known to man which is secondary to the apparent disassociation of iron from the hemoglobin so hemoglobin is the iron is the um, oxygen carrying capacity of the blood and you'll be stunned to find out that this is chemically illiterate as well in that to get the iron out of a hemoglobin is bloody hard work to the point when the way your body naturally deals with this when it wants to get the iron out of a hemoglobin is it actually breaks down the heme unit so when you pull the iron away from it, it actually causes a disruption. So the blood can't carry the same amount of oxygen. And the list just goes on and on. Yes, your list of causes for something that can't even be measured goes on and on. It's almost like you're trying to create fear such that you can sell people a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. But if you think he's finished making up horrific scare stories about what Wi-Fi will cause, not even close. He's just getting warmed up. How it affects the human system, or when I, whenever I say human system, it's actually affecting all living systems. Oh, no, no, not only has it had this horrific effect on the cancer rates, it's going to affect all life on Earth just like this. Uh, it's definitely going to affect all life on the planet because you're talking about a radio frequency electromagnetic field that's going to envelop the entire planet. My gosh darn golly, mister, that sounds terrifying. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so scared about the amount of energy that is going to be irradiating the whole planet. If only there was some way I could calculate it. Oh wait, there is. 
It's been estimated that there are some 4 million telecom towers in the world, and they each put out about 3 kilowatts of this deadly microwave radiation, which means there is 10 billion watts of this, this horrific disruptive waves that can cause gentle heating, irradiating the entire of the planet. If only there was some way to put that into perspective by, say, comparing it to the total amount of energy that the Earth receives, which is about 100,000 trillion watts of power. So on average, all of the heating that the Earth is getting from these, uh, from these evil communication towers is about one millionth of the heating that the Earth gets from the sun. And it's a, it's a global microwave uh, technology, essentially. It's, it's throwing off the entire magnetic grid of the Earth's essence. I think he means the Earth's magnetic field, but whatever. The human frequency that the Earth resonates with, you can think of it as the pulse of the, of the planet. It's being disrupted. Uh, yeah, there is no human frequency that the Earth resonates at. This is the sort of thing I was talking about when I said, this guy is a prime example for fractal wrongness. And you know, now you're talking about other implications that could be not just what, how it's going to affect life. Except it doesn't affect life, but keep going. But what it's going to do to weather patterns, what it's going to do to the, to the morphological structure and the, the configuration of the planet itself. Yeah, if he's worried about that one part in a million extra heating that you're going to get from the cell towers, he must be truly terrified about global warming, which is about a thousand times bigger than the effect that he is currently worrying about. Yep, global warming checks in at about one part in a thousand extra energy from the sun. You know, you're going to start seeing more natural disasters. You saw the footage with the, the sloughing off in Norway of 200, 2,000 feet by 500 feet right into the ocean. You're going to start seeing all sorts of landslides like this. You're gonna... Oh my word. He's now blaming landslides on 5G. Earthquakes, uh, there's been more earthquakes occurring. You're going to see all sorts of other natural disasters starting to increase because we're disrupting the Earth's magnetic grid. You know, one of the things that I think should be most prevalent for people is they should all be asking questions. We should all, as inhabitants of this planet, we should be asking questions. <laughs> yes, they should. Like... How is it possible that hundreds of thousands of people could watch Dribble like you just put out there and give it a 98% approval rating? Incidentally, you might have noticed that a lot of this video is immaculately well made. There is zero chance that Butter made these videos. They're just way too well made. If you actually sort of compare it to his typical production value of video, because these videos, they have the... The echo on the voice. Five millimeter, 60 hertz frequency and, and the detrimental effects it has on the human system. On the Sappy, emotive music. Actually, not just the human system, on any living system. And it's been completely ignored. And the stock footage that was very high definition doesn't really seem to quite line up. Like, why is there stock footage of an eclipse in here? Seeing more natural disasters. You saw the footage with the, the sloughing off in Norway of 200, 2,000 feet by 500 feet right into the ocean. Well, it's because it's put together by another YouTuber called Inspire Discipline. Yeah, uh, let's just see if we can uh, see the sort of videos that he makes. Imagine this, forced to fake science. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd lay off and pointing the finger about fake science if I were you. It was organized, it happened again. And this is David Icke, the yeah, footballer who went sort of crazy and declared himself the son of God. Start now, don't be deceived. It can't have happened, it doesn't make sense. And, and so it goes on with these sort of, beware, it's happening between now to 2030. That's a pretty wide window. And, you know, you go down, it will happen in December. It's all a diversion. It's happening now. You know, this whole thing is predicated on these people who are absolutely fuck nuts crazy are the inspired geniuses who can see what everyone else can't see. Yeah, <laughs> you know, 
like about how cell phones cause cancer. I'm going to drop a bomb on you, something that I just found this out myself. Now, I'm going to drop a bomb on you. I don't think they said that. I don't think they said we can't say this, but anyway, I'm going to say it anyway. And if I get in trouble for it, I'm going to get in trouble for it. You might dismiss these folks as harmless cranks, but it really ain't true. Just look at the numbers. The mere fact that you can get almost a million people to watch something like this, where it's factually wrong and internally inconsistent on almost every level, and still get about a 98% approval rating. Let's be honest, that's pretty unsettling. I mean, it's extremely unlikely that this video will match it on either of those stats. For the people like Butter like to blanket themselves in the language of rationality, but it's all a smokescreen. You apply even the most superficial of scrutiny to people like Butter and it all falls apart like a wet paper bag. The conclusion is inescapable. Social media has enabled credulous, easily led morons to mobilize on a scale hitherto never seen before in the history of mankind. And that is a genuinely scary thought. And that is the reason why I made this video. So with that sobering thought, many thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss out on new uploads like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you really appreciate the work of this channel, you can support it directly through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.